I've put all this into you. We've been working for years and it's just now paying off. Make the stallion is just now taking off. And as soon as you get an opportunity, It's fuck me. And that's what happened when you're too buddy buddy with a motherfucker. We're business partners, but it's buddy buddy. There's money involved, but it's buddy buddy. Yeah, you know, it's all love. I just want the best for you. If you're not going to stand up for yourself, like, of course you're going to dip on you. Oh, he'll be cool. Hey, Carl, you know, Jay-Z just hit me up. Uh, you know, this, this this is a chance of a lifetime. He offered me a contract. Oh, for real? That's crazy. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to go sign it on uh, Thursday. I just wanted to tell you and let you know if you want, maybe you want to come and uh, be there with me. Oh, uh, shit. I probably got to work that day. Uh... I ain't even told you what day it is. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to work on whatever day that is. Um, yeah, but that, that's a good look for you, though. Yeah, that's what I was saying. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you, you welcome. You welcome. Now you get on the phone with Jay Prince. Man, you ain't going to believe this shit, man. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation and the Man 2 Movement. And this is In Hindsight. Uh, today we're talking about Megan Thee Stallion uh, betraying the trust of uh, the guy that got her where she's at and then signing with Jay-Z. And smiling about it the whole time and this is what I want y'all to understand um, I just did a video I was supposed I, I tried to do this video uh, a couple of days ago and it ended up turning into a conversation about rappers and why the fuck most of you artists are not getting anywhere in what you're trying to do and even you small business owners um, I'll just say this this is a um, preview to that video in 2019, if you're still using orthodox methods of promotion, you're not going anywhere. If you're not sneaking your um, music, your product onto people, you're not, people, the last thing anyone is looking for is another fucking commercial on their fucking uh, feed. That's the last thing they want to see because they've seen so many other people do it. It just they become eye blind or nose blind, you know, obviously eye blind, timeline blind. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't want to see. They can't even see it no more. Is it sponsored? I right, scroll past. Y'all have to get out of that fucking way of thinking. Um, just what? But this is why I tell y'all. If you don't have nobody around you who can tell you the steps of getting your brand out there, hit me up and I'll show you the ropes of getting through certain uh, avenues. You're going to have to go outside. Doing this internet bullshit, you're not going to win. You have to hit the internet. I call it the land, sea, and air. I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you. The land would be the on the ground, passing out flyers, passing out CDs at gas stations, you know, outside the club, shit like that. Don't put your shit in people's windshield. The sea would be the ocean of information, which is the internet. And the air would be the airwaves, uh, Sirius Radio XM, uh, and your local radio station. You have to do all of those simultaneously. Simultaneously? to get a, a real result out of anything. Um, 
And if you if you too scared to go outside, if you down all that good shit, then keep on doing what you've been doing, buying numbers and shit like that, and just see what the fuck they get you. Rock out. But with this right here, this is the reason why I promote artists. I do artist development, promote brand, all that good shit. But I don't do the manager shit. A lot of the shit that I do is what a manager should be doing. This is why when an artist hits me up and they say they have, oh, I gotta hit, you got to hit my manager up with some shit like your manager. My nigga, if you have a manager with the numbers that you have, when I say numbers, I mean your interaction numbers, comments, real comments, likes, and shit like that. Um, with the shit that you have going on, my nigga, you need to fire him. He's not, he's not real. He don't, like, he's, he's showing it that he's a fucking failure. Manager, are you serious? But a manager is the one who's supposed to, um, as we know it, they're the one in the hood. You know, obviously when you get up there, to, you know, uh, the big leagues and shit like that. A manager is, you know, somebody who gets, he's the one, the person who connects all the dots and everything like that. And, and they're useful up there. Once you already have the shows and shit like that, all you got to do is pretty much, like I told you, was shot it. The label will be the, the pimp. The manager will probably be like the assistant pimp. That is hooking you into the leaks that the pimp has. So Atlantic already has the Madison Square Garden, they got these different clubs in Miami, all the big hubs and shit like that. All you have to do, the manager just go hook them up when it's time. Um, but from the bottom, this is where it matters, at the bottom, the bottom, when you're trying to get an artist that's a fucking nobody, like what, um, J. Prince Jr., Jazz Prince, I think. Um, that's what he did with Drake. And and the, the crazy part about being a good manager from the bottom is you have to be invisible. We got good news and we got bad news. Hold on, hold on. For all my... All my habitual donators that always hear their name during the... Um, AO Nation donation conversation that we do every third Sunday. I salute you before we do anything. Um, to take your hard earned and to put it in something that you fuck with, it motivates me beyond words. Period. Love. The good news is this I'm going to continue to do the How to Identify Nothing As Bit series. Of course, you know it's um, AO Nation exclusive series so you have to go to patreon.com and become a patron um, in order to watch it and once you become a patron you'll be able to see all of the other unreleased episodes that I couldn't put on YouTube every Monday we go live on the big face podcast channel at 7 30 a lot of y'all be late than a motherfucker but we go live every Monday at 7 30 um, if you're a lieutenant, you'll be given the privilege to call in and state your opinion at any point in time during the broadcast. Um, at 6.45, you'll be given a call-in number on your Patreon account, and we just go from now. For all my well, new people, if you want the uh, Are You Serious t-shirt, it's $15. The Big Face Podcast t-shirt is $15. The Men 2 t-shirt is $20, and the Big Face Podcast Scullies or ten dollars uh, go to paypal.me forward slash are you serious 10 address size color and what shirt you want it's time for the bad news the bad news is no one watches sponsored videos so if you're a rapper and you thinking that I'm gonna get an IG sponsorship or I'm gonna get a Facebook sponsorship nobody's watching the shit so the numbers that they're telling you that you have are bullshit. And you know that bullshit because when you post after you did your sponsorship, your shit plummets. Even when you are running the sponsorship, your fucking YouTube numbers are bullshit. 
They're bullshit. Stop playing with yourself. Here on this show, where we do not accept trash music, we do not accept homosexual music, and we don't accept that mumble rap bullshit. The prices for promotion start at $200. They go up to $2,000, depending on how much exposure you want. They start there. So if you don't have $200, there's no reason to come this way. If your music is not up to par, there's no reason to come this way. I explain the packages as soon as you come in the inbox and say, hey, I got my budget together with the packages. I'm not putting out no fucking price sheet so you can pass that shit to your fucking homosexual homeboy and send him my fucking way. Ain't no fucking price sheet because everybody can't get on this show. I want to see your motherfucking profile. I want to check see what the fuck I'm fucking with. This show has integrity. That's why we rock the way we rock. But you keep paying that $25, $35 to a fucking sponsorship which no one sees. They scroll right past it. And you'll be a fucking 50-year-old rapper. And that's just what it is. This shit you gotta be, homie. If you're a good manager and you're getting your artists up, if you're gonna really get them where they need to be at, you should be invisible. The public, the people shouldn't even fucking really know, you know what I'm saying, about you for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, in the beginning, I don't think, you know, we didn't really have Drake saying rap a lot. He wasn't screaming out a record label. And that's why we fuck with him. And that's, and it was just so ahead of the curve because we look at these labels nowadays since you know the the, the internet has is so much information here we see vividly what the artists have been dealing with with labels for so long so we see how they rate artists and don't really give a fuck how, like what kind of blood suckers they are um so when you sign to the label we damn near look at look at it like you selling out crazy part about that shit is when you got an artist like russ um, that's the first artist I can think of. I don't want to say Chance the Rapper because Chance the Rapper is supposed to be independent also. But it's, uh, it's mumblings and rumblings of him being a fucking industry plant. Um, very good idea. Extremely good idea. Once the thinkers, the people that go in the think tank at these labels, realize that being signed to a label is looked at like a cheat Damn near like having a um, a famous parent. It takes some respect away. You know what I'm saying? Like it used to be, once you got a deal, everybody fucking with you. Now when you get a deal, I like, oh, fuck him, and they're on to the next artist. Um, like how some people like college football better than NFL because they feel like they they fight in college. They're trying to get something. And that's true in a lot of cases. But what I'm saying here is we didn't hear Megan Thee Stallion. Her come up was not accidental. It wasn't accidental. I was telling Katrina from the Conversation With Me show, I was telling her because she was asking me who I, you know, who, who, who do I think rap good and shit like that. And I told her Megan Thee Stallion can rap. Megan Thee Stallion can rap. She's not uh, Young Miami. She's not JT. She's not fucking Cardi B. She can rap. She can rap. She come. She's from that Texas cloth of. Um, it's another artist I could say a female rapper from that, but I'm not gonna say it because. Um, I don't want to get these motherfuckers no promotion. Um, and I, I truly, to be honest, both of these artists, I feel like, are pretty much doing what the fuck they have to do. What I feel, I'm going to be honest with you, what I feel like happened with Megan Thee Stallion was, she was doing the good rapping shit. I can rap real good. I right, look look how good I rap. I'm a girl and I can rap. Look how I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Her, her talent level isn't one where, like, the story of fucking city girls where I didn't even want to rap. I was over here stealing hair, and she just came over and said, uh, 
But because she was working at Popeyes and I was working at Burger King, and she said, "She, we need to quit this shit, bitch." So neither one of us was fine enough to be strippers. So she, we had to get it how we live. That's why she and Jill, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no fall into the music shit. Yup. Meg the Stallion is actually a fucking rapper. Like she is a rapper that you can put in a cipher. And I'm, I'm you can come at me and you can say, all right, what the fuck you talking about? Listen to me. Someone like I'm not no novice in this shit. This ain't making this. She's not no fucking slouch. It's just her subject matter has thrown her into this place. You know, can can Nicki Minaj rap then? If, if, if you know what I'm saying. Once you go into this dick and pussy realm, the sex realm, the selling, this, this, this. So down here is the trap door. This is how you come in as a nigga trap door. As a bitch, you come in the stripper door. You know what I'm saying? It's damn near the same door. They walk in together. You know what I'm saying? If you're a bitch, you're a stripper, so you dress the part. Nigga, you're a trapper, you dress the part. If you're a bitch and you, you know, you're, if you're a female and you lyrical, you know what I'm saying? You come to the door and you dress like, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a 90s hip hop artist. Like, oh no, you need to go upstairs. You need to go upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, you need to go upstairs. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I think, uh, what was that fucking video? Well, I was saying that the, uh, they would tell the girl who ain't looking like a stripper she need to go to the, the back door. I'm gonna have to find that video. Shout out to the uh, Ken Duo show. We're going to be doing some collaborations where we turn some of these uh, episodes into cartoons. So if there's any uh, of the episodes from any of the Stupid Rapper Show, Big Facts Podcast, or the Rap Trap that you can see like a part of it being turned into a cartoon. I was actually telling a story. You can actually see it in your mind. Um, give me the video and the timestamp in my Instagram DM or my email and uh, we'll see if we can't get that out for y'all. But... Once you come over here to the dick and pussy and you, you come to the sex door, it's like this is how you sell. This is how you sell. That hip-hop shit that, that, you know what I'm saying, what Trippy Red was doing. Trippy Red is a very good fucking example. Very good example. I damn near want to say Tink, but I can't even say Tink because she was like, she's, just, she's too talented all around. She's too talented all the fuck around. Like, she can't, there's no way she can drop down to their level. She's too fucking talented. And once you start doing that singing shit, um, it's like you show that. So they try to throw you in an R&B realm and then they try to make you sexy and shit and sexy and gutter stripper rapper just don't mix. So it's very, very hard because this is the devil's industry. It's not supposed to be easy for the good hearted people. This is no longer a place where you come and show your talent. This is a place where you come to hypnotize the rest of the world. If you can't be used as a tool of destruction, they have nothing for you. You, you keep getting a run around. You keep getting a run around. That, you know what? That's why when I see artists like, um, what's my nigga name out of uh, Miami? D-Rock. I think his name uh, on Instagram is like Dominican Rock or some shit like that. But I think that nigga's on an ankle monitor right now. Like, and when he speak, when he's he got a song with uh, Baby Soldier too. And and I think like when nigga come from that, and, and I just I just salute the shit when a nigga actually come from that. And he's not, and he's giving you the real street shit, but not trying to lead you down that path. So a motherfucker that tell you the pain that's down that path, I have to fuck with you. I have to fuck with you because you're doing the same thing I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, go fuck with him. Like, don't like, but you know, like I'm saying, the labels can hear the music just like anybody else can. So it's like they'll look over a nigga like D Rock, a nigga like Cam Bottom. 
You're not, you, you can't be used. How can I use you? What, what the fuck can I do with, like, the fuck? You're gonna destroy my fucking plan. I don't need to wake people up. I need to keep them asleep. I don't want them to hear about what they should be doing. I want them to hear about what they're doing right now. It's already easier. It's already easier to do what you know is pointless. You know that going back out here with the sack, nigga. I was just on the phone with Trina again. I'm, I'm saying like it was. I was. It was just. I was so live. I was just so live. Um, you know, like it's fucking nine o'clock at night. I'm on I-65 with, you know, her and her in this fucking live-ass Jeep driving 120 fucking miles an hour listening to fucking Kevin Gates. And they just amazed. Ah, he's a... And she looking back at her like, I told you he was fucking awesome. You know what I'm saying? She was, you know, she was, um, and I, I was, in, the, the girl in the back, she was white. This the mixed girl. The, um... That's the girl who gave me the passing. But, um, you can't help but have those flashbacks, man. You can't help but, you know, cause you that nigga, but these, as I found out, they're, this whole thing, is it, they were demons. Maybe without even knowing. But they were being used as tools, and maybe even I was being used as a fucking tool to destroy. Why in the fuck am I driving this fast, weaving through track? For no reason! I'm gonna go get them some, uh, cause you know, they, they not, you know, I'm, I'm the, so they can't, so I gotta, you know what I mean? If you ever been in that situation, you know what I'm talking about, but Once you live that life, dog, minus the drugs, minus the, you know, the sex and shit like that, it's just the speed of it. Just the speed of it. You know, when I first, dog, when I first came home, dog, I was just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I'm built for war. Like, I, I perform the best in chaos. What the fuck is this? And this is why I avoided home for so long because this is Baldwin County, Alabama. You know, I was doing my shit in Mobile. That's the city. This is Baldwin County. You know what I mean? You're not going to do no crimes over here. You're not going to do any crimes over here. Um, so you're going to sit the fuck down. Like, what the fuck? Like... Nigga, come on, man, we outside. And it's just, but when I, you think about it the most is when you listen to music. This is how all this shit ties in. You listen to music. I can't even listen to certain music. Like as soon as, I can't even, like uh, a, a certain ringtone, I had a certain ringtone on my phone and I can't even, not a not a song ringtone, I'm talking like a, a default Um a default ringtone is like a certain it's a certain kind of bell and I can't even hear that shit cause that shit just like whenever that phone rang it mean like it, it's go time like it's that shit it, it just it takes you back like it's a trigger it's a fucking trigger and that music becomes a trigger also we can I don't want to go deep into frequencies and shit like that but I'm sure that has something to do with it what I'm talking about is when that music is hitting like that and those words are telling you that what you're doing is not only, not only <laughs> is what you're doing live, but if you did more, you will be even live. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, it's that right there. So that's the first thing. If you can't be used as a hourglass 
not hourglass, but a fucking, you know, a, a whatever kind of watch this is that hypnot people that hypnotize people use. I don't need you. I like, you know what I'm saying? It is I don't what the fuck am I gonna do with you? So I salute any artist that will go against the grain and try to fight this battle and bring those people that are being used as tools out of their slumber. It's inevitable because with Megan Good, Megan Good, I see something in Meg the Stallion. I'm be honest with you, dog. I think that she's truly being blinded by her dreams of being a fucking rapper. That's all it is. When you come in the game and you actually, I just love to rap. I have to believe that's because if she wasn't, she wouldn't be rapping like this. And if dog, if if she was like that, we would have been heard about her. She got tired, just like a whole lot of artists get tired of not being seen, being looked over. And saying, fuck it. I give in. That's what selling your soul is. If you're a good person and you don't mind being used for evil, you sold your soul. We don't have to go into any of those words and we don't have to go into that bullshit. Right there, right then. When you did something that you didn't want to do, right then, you sold it. You got money for it. You benefited from that. She was in college. We have, you know, the pictures of her being in college and shit like that. And this is the rap trap. This is the rap trap. Now, when, as time goes on, as time goes on, the way I, I see Meg the Stallion as the girl, you know, the quiet girl and shit like that, and now she's finally, now the cool girls are, come over here and hang with us, and now she's just doing the shit that the cool girls do. Just trying to be, just trying to fit in. This what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to twerk. I'm, I'm supposed to. This wasn't Meg the Stallion. I'm not even saying this because I've seen this. I'm telling you, this was not. I, it's it's just she doesn't come off like uh, Cardi B and these other motherfuckers that are built for this shit. They don't have nothing but ah, oh, this fuck me, fuck me on stage. Like that's gonna be the next shit. A bitch getting like because if you look at these. My nigga, look here. I posted the video of Meg Thee Stallion performing. To get it, I had to get it off of YouTube. When I posted shit and said, um, are these nuts coming from me? I didn't say that. I said, is Meg Thee Stallion a question mark? Dot, dot, dot. My shit gets fucking age restricted. Saying that uh, she has on uh, the, the clothes she's wearing is sexually like wh what the fuck did you say? She has on sexually provocative clothes. Have you seen rap? What the fuck are you talking about? But if you like this shit is dog. I'm like, how do you succeed if you're not a voluptuous? If you can't twerk, how do you succeed in rap as a female? Give me someone. Meg Thee Stallion, as a lyricist, as an artist, cannot make it. So maybe she was made the rapper first. But now it's, I, you gotta, you know, and I, I can just only imagine like how dirty she had to feel, you know, being a girl who comes from a good family, you know, all this, all that. To where, you know, you even think being in a studio with a nigga and a nigga looking at you, giving you the eye, you just feel disgusted. To where now, this is what you have to do, like. But let's get to the point of it all. I told y'all before that, um... With the uh, Takashi 6 ix 9 situation, when Shotty got 15 years, I said, 
Um, the reason why pimping a artist is dangerous for a pimp is because if you're not the biggest pimp, you're gonna lose. It's just like the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Like, was well, actually worse than the NFL because with the NFL, with the NFL, this need to get a flip. Uh, with the NFL, um. They might feel some camaraderie with their team, so they might just not be in it for the the money. They might be in it for you know I want to get a, a ring with this team. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's emotions tied to the team, but with this music shit, it's like fuck you. And the C CIA agents that are at the head of these labels, they're just giving you that attitude from the jump. They can shake hands. Hey, how's it going? We love your music. Hey, we, we want to work with. Oh my, we just, oh, we love the new song. Oh my goodness. All right, you're gonna love it here. But from, like they understand this business, and you think, oh, they, they really love me. No, no. They love the money that you're gonna make them. They don't give a fuck about your music. Yeah, what, what the fuck you trying to? Yeah, I man. You know, on this project, did you hear what happened to Afro Man? When a nigga who made the song, because I got high, because I got high, because I got high, that nigga, he told his fucking label he wanted to do gospel music. They dropped him. Dropped him. There's no question about what the whole, uh, uh, what are we doing here and what's the, 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 the mission here. Give a fuck about nothing. Like, we want these people to keep partying, keep buying. My cousin, my fucking cousin, my brother works for Big Pharma. Let's get some more Percocet talk going. Let's get some more fucking pill popping going on. Hey, let's fucking, hey, aren't they great? Yeah, let's get that going on. Hey, you want one? No, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. But you guys keep popping them. Come on, let's get let's let's pop them on up. Hey, take another one. Fuck that shit. Hey. It's fucking party. And I'm it, so business. The nigga called whatever the fuck. Uh Jay Prince homeboy. So this nigga probably be a baseball player or some shit like that. He finds Megan when she's making the rapper. Uh, when she's still in college. Um, probably doesn't even find her. She probably finds him like, hey, um, I see you got your label going. I would love to be part of it. Uh, just humble as fuck. I've been just, you know, trying to make something happen. Um, if you could just give my stuff a listen, I'll take a listen to it. He go listen to it. I, I'll fuck with you. I right, so they start working, start working. And him being, you know, a friend of Jay Prince, you want to think that he is somebody who doesn't need all the, the glitz and glamour. I just, I'm just about the money. I'm just about the success. You like Slim. I'm just about the success. Let, let's get money. You know what I'm saying? I'm with that. So I'm working with you. I'm showing love. It's all love right here. I'm putting, you have to understand as a manager, when you're getting an artist with no name, with no fucking fan base, you're taking all the risk. This is why when an artist starts co to complain about their fucking contract and shit like that, it's like you weren't complaining about this contract when you signed it. You were a fucking nobody. And I'm telling you, man, fans do something to people. Like, here's the thing. If you didn't get no fans until you started fucking with this person, um... I mean, I guess they your fans. You know what I'm saying? Like, but nobody was fucking with you until you signed with Atlantic. Nobody fucked with you until you signed a priority. Nobody was fucking with you until you signed a Jay-Z. So it's like, I'm the reason why you have any of these fans that are boosting your head up to even come to me and say that this contract is bullshit. Hold on, my nigga. I took a gamble on you. I not only put a hundred thousand in the production in uh, radio shows and different type of promotion, but I gave you a hundred thousand dollar advance just 
off that. You know, it's like, there you go, take that. Take that, it's all good. When you didn't have shit, I'm the one who took the gamble. You could have failed and I would have took $200,000 loss on me and you wouldn't have had to fail none of that shit. But now that you won and I want my money back with interest, I'm a fucking slime ball fucking creep? No, no. And that's, that's why, and see, I probably wouldn't have uh, understood that until I got to this spot, to where I worked hard, didn't have no help, nobody. I built this shit with me. The people finally saw me and, and it came up. It was all good. Then I immediately, in the early days, I was just, just, you know, helping, helping, helping. And it's, it blows your mind when you hear someone that um, you genuinely tried to help come at you like, my nigga, you ain't did shit. Oh, my nigga, I gave you $2,000 worth of fucking, fuck the promotion advice. Nigga, I had to figure all this shit out on my own. I just saved you two fucking years. The fuck are you talking about? And that's when you, you start understanding, you know, like, we're going to keep this shit business. So we're going to keep it business from the door. From the door, it's going to be, hey, man, uh, go ahead and uh, give me $1,500 and uh, we're going to get started. Ain't no believe in, ain't no, uh, ain't none of that shit because you, it, people inevitably, inevitably are going to change once they have a following. It's just going to happen. Um, sometimes it has to happen for the good. You know, uh, an audience might motivate somebody to stop doing some bullshit that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be a change there. And everyone is not a solid person. There are really some fucking idiots out here. Real fucking idiots. I had a nigga in the, be the, the beginning who shared my shit on his Facebook that had no fucking, no, no people. He's a fucking... My nigga, nobody even fucks with you. Like, I, and he shared it on Google+. Plus. This nigga told me, I'm the reason why you got 20,000 subscribers. When I met you, you had um, uh, 6,000. You met me? And it's like, that's the type of story that a nigga can tell. A nigga can tell that shit behind... Nigga make a video. Yeah, I was the one who uh, helped Ayo Conseco and, and uh and I just I was doing it out of you know the kindness of my heart and then he just started changing up. Hold the fuck on my nigga. And and see but when shit like that happened, it's like first off, my nigga, any one of like anything that's the first if you fuck with the show, this is what everyone posts the show like when they like it. That's the first thing. You know what the nigga asked? He asked for me to pay him. He asked me to fucking pay him. Like, how, how long do you think before I can quit my job? And you know what it was? I'm going to explain this to you. Be weary of people who want to do shit for you for free. Because what happens with free shit is, it's like, oh no, no charge, man, no charge. It's like, okay, well, if you're doing it for free, it's like, it's kind of, It'll be kind of rude for me. And, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still in disbelief that people are even, you know, like, what the fuck? Um, so you don't want to turn the person, like, so you're going to do it for free. Like, why would I turn you down? I think that would be kind of rude. So, I mean, yeah, just whatever you want to do, just, you know, I guess share the video. Like, you can't do no harm. Just sharing the video. Like, I, you don't really have any followers. I, yeah, fuck it. Go ahead. Do your thing. So, that's his line. To you, like, hey man, I, sh I shared the video, like, hey, I appreciate that man's love. You never go back and look over their work because it's for free. Like, I'm like, hey man, look, when you share that video, man, you ain't, you ain't tagging no people. Make sure you tag me. I'm not finna go look what the fuck you did. If you tag three people, including me, uh, <laughs> in a post, whatever, like that, I'm like, alright, do your thing. I might unfollow you because I don't want to keep seeing that fucking notification. 
Um, but what happens is because you don't critique their work, they think they're doing an excellent job. Because they're doing it for free, so they say, hey man, uh, you know, I share, hey man, what's up, man? Keep, that's right, that's what, you know, you try to, hey, appreciate the love, you know, whatever. Even if you like, you're not really doing shit, but hey, love, you know, if that's, if that gives you, that makes you, you know, feel well, that's all I'm about, is making, you know, feel good, man, be, oh man, love, love, love. But what happens is, now, because you can't criticize their work. Oh, I'm doing a great job. Shit, I, I know I'm finna get paid for this shit. But hold on, hold on. If I was paying you, I would have told you that you're not doing this shit right. You're not doing shit. You're not doing anything. Like, I pay you for what? I promote my, I don't, what? How long do you think before I can quit my job? Hold, listen. Listen, look, this, this, from this point, just don't share no more of my stuff. I want you to work on yourself, man. This is a real situation, I'm telling you. Just work on yourself, man. Just, just work on yourself, and, and I'm going to try to help you, you know, promote your thing so you can get it going. Because, and it's like, you have to watch those people that don't have a goal, and I'm just going to hook on to you. Watch those fucking people. You need... Fuck with somebody who has a goal of their own and they've been working on it before they got to you. Dog, I had a couple motherfuckers, man. I had one dude fucking accuse me of taking his fucking content. And he had a he had a weird he he it was something about um you put on a ski mask right after I had a, a thumbnail of a ski mask. Dog, tell me, please tell me that you're not, you're accusing me. Dog, I've, I've been nothing but friendly to you. I've done nothing but help you. Like, there's, honestly, there's no way that you can, and that's what motherfuckers will be thinking, they helping you. Like, how in the fuck are you helping me? How are you helping me? Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, you know, oh, uh, man, you definitely want to wear a condom whenever you fuck. That was up, you damn sure right, man. And that's, yeah, you know, you remember that time I told you about condoms, wearing condoms? My nigga, I showed you how to work con master. I told, I showed you, I gave you the whole fucking YouTube class. For free. Out of love. And you're seriously telling me that I'm copying you because I had a fucking thumbnail of a... It was me in a fucking mask. It was me in a mask because I was doing a little line of video. I was trying to show this what the niggas look like. To be honest, my nigga, I don't even watch your videos. I don't even watch your videos. I didn't even know that you did that. Because your videos are boring. Like that's, I've been trying to help you with your shit. It's, your shit is boring. It's boring. And this was back then and shit like that. Oh, yeah, you didn't know how you really feel. But it's like, my nigga, why the fuck would you come with this shit? But that's what I'm saying. You have to watch people, man. Even, it, it's just crazy. And that's why, that's why I have this isolated, you know, situation. Because even when I try to, you know, help a person, without, you know, you just get your whole hand cut off. Either they not gonna work or the fuck they, they trying to, like they don't have their mind on right. Motherfuckers can't hear. So believe me, you know, th this whole entertainment shit, it's, it, it's crazy, man. It's fucking insane. Um, and I just feel blessed that I, I didn't have to turn the camera on and be somebody I wasn't in order to garner an audience. Um, but back into it, um, as a manager, I put all this into you. We've been working for years and it's just now paying off. Make the stallion is just now taking off. And as soon as you get an opportunity,
is fuck me. And that's what happened when you're too buddy buddy with a motherfucker. We're business partners, but it's buddy buddy. There's money involved, but it's buddy buddy. Yeah, you know it's all love. I just want the best for you. If you're not gonna stand up for yourself, like of course you're gonna dip on you. Oh, he'll be cool. Hey, Carl, you know Jay Z just hit me up. Uh, you know this 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 is a chance of a lifetime. He offered me a contract. Oh, for real? That's crazy. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm probably gonna go sign it on uh, Thursday. I just wanted to tell you and let you know if you want maybe you want to come and uh, be there with me. Oh uh, shit! I probably gotta work that day. Uh. I ain't even told you what day it is. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to work on whatever day that is. Um, yeah, but that, that's a good look for you though. Yeah, that's what I was saying. All right, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you welcome. You welcome. Now you get on the phone with Jay Prince. Man, you ain't gonna believe this shit, man. You ain't gonna believe this shit, dog. Man, she finna sign with Jay-Z, man. She finna sign with Jay-Z. What you mean? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know, this, this is not a business. And I, it's so many of y'all. The reason why you would have these situations where an artist will work with a manager or a label, um, use them as a stepping stool to get where they want to be at, and then leave them there and go to the next level and now you can't even get in touch with the motherfucker that you helped get to that level it's all like they, they were broke as fuck they didn't have anything you put everything into them and they just leave you here high and dry fuck that shit nigga please nigga please i ain't doing it i'm not doing it give me mine up front because when it comes to trusting a human in the interrogation room, and when it has to deal with money, you're going to lose. Just know that you're going to lose. You can hope that you win, but just know you're going to lose. If you got to deal with money or freedom, you're going to lose. You don't trust nobody in that regard. So from the jump, I own your likeness. I own all the music. I own everything for at least eight years and four projects if you try to get sleep I just ain't gonna put nothing up for eight years alright well you still owe me four projects because all of that all of that motherfucking popularity that I put into you but please believe that popularity is for sale it's definitely for sale and motherfuckers are buying you can't just be a fucking, I'm just a regular rapper off the street and I'm just going to come up here and go to Funk Flex. I'm just a regular rapper off the street and I'm going to get on fucking, you know, uh, in this fucking DJ pool or have this going on. You got to have connections. The first thing that you will want is have somebody who actually can control a, all the DJs in a 20 mile radius. I control, me not even control, but I have relationships. I have relationships with all the DJs, club DJs, radio DJs in a 20 mile radius. You that nigga. If you got those connections and them niggas, all them niggas owe you favors, nigga, please. Ain't no, ain't no doing no favor at that point. Everything's about money. If I bring an artist to these niggas to say, look, we finna go on this one. We finna move forward. If you can make a call and set up a date for eight DJs, club, strip club, and radio DJs to come to a spot, and it can't be all around the world to where it's spick and span, you got little spots, sporadic little spots and shit like that. It has to be in a closed area. This is how you start, and then you expand. You're going to have to have a, a videographer to go to these clubs and see the reaction of the people, the DJs, the club. Listen to me now. I'm giving it to you. The club DJs in this 20-mile radius 
are going to control how fast you spread. After these people in these clubs, because, you know, when we was kids and shit like that, we used to go to the club. I don't even, I don't fuck with, tri I, I didn't fuck with Trill Fam music. Y'all better not fight this bitch. Hold up. Y'all bet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I-N-D-E. I would never, you would never hear that shit in my car or at the house. But at the club, I know every word. Club DJs run this shit. So if he play a song, play one verse of that bitch. Just for a whole fucking month straight. Four, it's four, four nights. Every Saturday night. And you know, maybe Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, spinning that motherfucker. Not, you know, just spinning it because I'm in the club. He spin that shit regularly. So like, that's two times a night. Them folk gonna know that shit, man. And then now, when you put that shit online, now they can, oh, that's who that is. Now when they see you at the gas station, oh, that's who that is. Now when they hear it on the radio, oh, I didn't even know they was around here. Now you can make something happen. But because you playing online, nigga, these folks don't give a fuck about you. You don't give a fuck about Young Ham Ham. Young Ham Ham just dropped a fucking whole mixtape on all platforms. You know, they got to say, yeah, it just dropped on all platforms. Who gives a fuck? Well, nigga, you are Young Ham Ham. To people in Alabama, to people in Nevada, anybody that's not in... Your house, <laughs> you are young ham ham. Even the people in your city, nigga, they not finna go listen to your shit. The point of having your shit on all platforms is people are gonna go stream it at high numbers. You got three of your fucking homeboys and your mama going on fucking uh, Spotify listening to yo. You got 12 streams now. Yeah, you got 12 of them now. You need to spend your money the right way. You don't know what you're doing. So you're going to have to go to... And you can't... A lot of times you can't even just go to a fucking club DJ. Because all he know is this little spot. This all he know is this little... So he don't have the mind to know... Man, I'm trying to take over the whole fucking... You know what I'm saying? Southeastern Eastern region. With, within this right here, you also have hair salons. Barber shops. These are your influences. <laughs> That's too much. If you want a consultation, it's fifty dollars an hour. Go to the DM, we get it in. As far as a manager, this this the only place I can see it from because as an artist, I wouldn't need a manager until I need somebody to answer. Until the shit gets so big, to I need somebody to answer my phone call because everything that the manager could like I. I can do that shit. I can probably do it better than you because I can go talk to people. But you would kind of want some. But I just, I just put one of them. I wouldn't have uh, a nigga. I gotta pay to do that shit. I have my nigga. Like, look, it ain't gonna look right if I do it. So you go do it. Go uh, ask some yada yada yada. You know what I'm saying? This is why you probably do want to have somebody that you maybe can rely on. But if worst come to worst, you can do it your fucking self. You work, don't you? This should be, the, like, this is the thing that's going to get you all the fucking money. So, your whole McDonald's check, it should go to, hey, man, look, I need you to fuck with me. But before you slide the money, you want to kind of build a relationship with them. But, I'm going into it again. As a manager, ain't no love in this shit, because... This is for all the other managers. Everybody needs to pay attention. This is what's going to happen to you. As soon as the artist that you've been putting your blood, sweat, and tears in, and you felt like, man, it, it, this love, man, shit, we ain't got, we don't need no paperwork, bro. This love right here, bro. This love. When that money get right there, shit, bro, I'm finna help you. Shit, I'm just finna take this deal, and I'm finna help y'all up, bro. That's what I'm saying. We finna, we finna take this shit and flip it, bro. We finna take it and flip it, bro. Shit. And then motherfucker get harder and harder get caught because the fucking, you know, you got to go over here like, no, they can't come. You got to, the label giving you uh, three people that go with you like, you can't have these niggas around. And a relationship slowly, slowly, slowly is going to fucking diminish. Because you as a manager, you running around trying to, like, it's your, what the fuck is your job now? 
they make the decision, not you. So you the neighborhood dope boy. You ain't really know shit about music, but your motherfucking your artist hit. Oh uh, shit. Uh, yeah, you know she. Uh, you just end up the same shit with Rocco, with Future and shit like that. It's like this is what you know. You expect love. There is no love. There's no space for love in this business. This business is about death and destruction. There's no space in here for love. This is where love dies. The entertainment industry. I made a post um, not too long ago uh, saying that um, a public relationship won't last. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is no public relationship that will succeed. So, the only thing that is going to survive in the entertainment industry is entertainment. And what's entertaining is drama. Not love, oh, look how cute they is. No, no, no. We need to see candles flying, cups flying, he fucking her, she fucking him. That's what we need. There's no room for love in this music industry, especially not in the music industry. Not where we at. They got us down here fighting this until we change this shit. And I feel like we change it through showing what's actually being said. And your, your whole verse was about killing a nigga. So let's show what it looks like for a nigga to get killed for his shit. Enter XXX Tentation. Oh, you don't like that? Okay. How don't you like that? How don't you like that? You're a avid listener. You love this shit. This is what you love. This gangster shit. And we can't even play that game like, well, shit, we, listen, we watch movies and shit. Will Smith can play any fucking part, and we don't need for him to be a street nigga. You won't listen to a nigga. Well, I can't even say that shit for real. Because when 6 9 get out, I'd be damned if y'all ain't gonna fuck with him. Not y'all, but the world in that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, this shit all topsy-turvy. But as soon as an artist gets assaulted, he can't do what an actor does. He gotta really stand up in the paint. If a nigga don't live what he rap about, you don't wanna fuck with him. So let me show you what his life look like. It is what it is, my nigga. It is what it is. Uh, same thing with a bitch. Like, you hold it, like, y'all selling so much fucking pussy and scamming so many niggas. Ain't no fucking way y'all hoes ain't dead yet. Like, it's just, it's, it's throw the fuck off. I'm glad to see a lot of you IG models starting to come out the woodworks and show these old white men. You know what I'm saying? Actually starting to show them and so you can, so people can see. Like, this is how I get my fingernail did, my head. I have to fuck this old, big-ass, fat white man. He's an executive for some fucking place. He calls me over every week. I give him some head. I gotta, you know, she gotta use her fingers and, you know, just... That's what she has to do. And that's why she has to put all this, these furs and all this other shit on top of her so you just can't even see how fucking disgusting her inside looks. Her soul is just destroyed, decrepit. How dare you, you nothing ass bitch, make this shit look good when you know that you dying inside. The first time a big ass fat rich man climbed on top of you, you fucking cried. But you online talking about you always slave. So now the 13 year old girl gonna follow you. It's been a rap trap. Uh, make sure you hit the PayPal. Make sure you go to the Patreon. How to identify nothing as bitch. We on episode four right now. Get over there right now. See y'all in a minute. Love, love. This shit bullshit, dog.